All right, it's that time. Let's talk about batteries. Today, I'm going to be talking about these. These are very peculiar batteries. They're not very useful for many of the cases. They're basically not dense enough to be in cars and they're too expensive to be used for storage. So there's very small niche when which these are very, very useful and that's car audio. So if you're into car audio, these will be very interesting to you. So the car audio world is very interesting. They need a lot of amps and they need those amps at 12 volts because all the equipment or most of the equipment is made at 12 volts, right? And so very low voltage. So it means hundreds and hundreds of amps and even up to the thousands of amps, right? Depending on the size of your system. So what they've discovered is that these lithium batteries with high C ratings are very, very useful for their application, right? And so that's what these are. These are from a hybrid car. I think they're from like Prius's cars or something. I don't know exactly what these came out of. They came to us already in modules, right? That's a module, but they don't have many info in there. And all we know is that these cells are Panasonic and they're about 10, 15 C or something, right? So about 25 amp powers, that's where testing is uh, coming up. And so this is a 4S, four in series for a 16 volt, uh, 14 volt nominal, right? Uh, and then uh, 50 amp hours, right? Because then there's two of those in here. So two in parallel. And so that will turn out to put out about 400 amp continuous. But of course this is a continuous rating. In audio, the loads are transient. That means like the music is going and then the bass note kicks in and for like 30 seconds, you know, I mean, 30 seconds is a long time the note just comes on and it's consuming tons. So then uh, these are capable of putting, I don't know, uh, this one's probably capable of putting a thousand amps, right? Of course, there's a limit on how, how much the sag of the cells will get in there. And so of course, this is what's gonna determine ultimately how much amps you can pull off of here. So because I don't uh, operate in, the, in this world and in this market, then I don't know how to, I, I don't have the equipment to test that, but I can test the continuous, right? And so the 400 amp continuous, I would say these are five, 600 amp bursts, right? That they, they can handle before the voltage gets too low. And of course this is, if the battery is fully charged or towards the top of the charge curve, then they can withstand a lot more and they can put out a, a lot more amps. Uh, this is a good case for these batteries because usually what those guys are doing is running an alternator and it's just running off of the engine, right? And so as they are in competition or something like that, they keep the voltage high, as high as they can by running like a high performance alternator. And so it'll keep these batteries topped off. And so every time that note, that base note hits, then these are able to just put out all of their power. And so we have some of these cells and I made these bus bar kit in here. And I know what you're saying. How can you get 400, 500, 600 amps off of bus bars? Well, there's several layers in here of two ounce copper. I think there's like six or eight layers underneath this one right here. And so today, what we are going to test, so I've been testing these in-house here and as I'm developing this kit. But today, uh, there's two sizes, right? This is the 50 amp hour, which is uh, two cells in parallel. And then this bigger one, which is 600 amps, because there's three cells in parallel. And so today we're gonna test this and see how high we can get. Uh, it's a bit hard because of the 75 amp power. That means that like within seven minutes or 10 minutes or something like that, you're, you're running through the, all of the energy stored in this battery, right? And so what you need to do is hit it and you need to hit it hard and then just see uh, how uh, hot these uh, bus bars are gonna get. And then, and then we'll see how uh, good we got into the rating. I'm rating this as 600 amps continuous the cells can do that but now let's see how the bus bars can do that okay. oh one last thing i've noticed that uh the audio world likes to use these uh multiple cables big thick cables to transfer the power and so one good easy way to do that is to use these little blocks here that allow you to put this uh two on uh the two gauge cable in here without putting a ring terminal. So we're gonna offer these in two versions uh, with these blocks in here and also stuff so you can put ring terminals, right? So, but ring terminals is more work. You have to crimp the thing or whatever. So a lot of these guys, what they do, they just rather use these and they just use the simple tool to crimp it in there. I'm using ferrules in here so that, you know, it's a proper way to do these sort of stuff. 
So let's test these guys. All right, we're gonna start this test in order to get 600 amps out of this. Uh, I'm trying everything, all the loads I'm throwing in here, including the shop lights. So let's turn the shop lights on. There we go. That's 77 amps. Now we're gonna try charging my car. All right, so here we go. So it's 500 amps. Continuous, let's see how that is gonna do. Ooh, number one is uh, lagging behind. Number four is the strongest, 2.2, 2.12. It's a 147 millivolts difference. Smelling burnt, and it's these inverters. It can't even handle 2,000 watts each. Come on. All right, so that is the test. That's how long it lasted to get the thing at 500 amps. All right, so that is the test, uh, 7,000 watts. This is pretty hard to do the way I have them here. Look, this is 11,000 watts worth of inverters and at, at 6,500 6, watts or whatever that we were running the test, these are smelling like burnt, like these, these are struggling, right? So I don't know, maybe I need 15,000 uh, three of these 5K inverters to be able to run that without the inverters you know, just crappy now. These are cheap inverters, I guess. So maybe I just need to get like good quality, but you know, there's, it's just really hard to get that much power on 12 volts, right? And that's what, and that's a perfect use case for these, right? To get 7,000 watts of audio in a car, right? So this little battery will do it. So check them out at jack35.com. There's two versions. There's a 75 amp power, which is we just tested here. And then the 50 amp power, which is slightly smaller. They come in block terminals and also in stud terminals. So. There you go, check them out. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one, bye.